Tim, talk to me about this, this journey of philosophy. And I mean, today, when we think about science, we think about the fact that it's very pragmatic, very practical. And a lot of scientists tend to disregard what philosophers have to say. So I want to know from you, does science need philosophy? Well, um, as, I, I mean, I'll start with an observation that I that I always make, which is that all those people uh, in science departments and universities, they all hold doctorates of philosophy, right? <laughs> um, so they are, I mean, officially, they are philosophers. Why is that? Because philosophy is just by definition the search for wisdom or knowledge, right, or understanding, uh, which people do in all sorts of ways, hopefully, in different departments uh, using different techniques. So do you need philosophy? Well, if, you, if you're if you not interested in knowledge, if you're not interested in understanding you're not in business as far as I'm concerned. Then, you know, what's left in that, what they mean, of course, is do you need what people in philosophy departments do? Mm-hmm. And, and uh, of course, Newton was a natural philosopher, right? I mean, he would identify himself as a philosopher and Descartes and Leibniz and, you know, all of these people who were very important in the history of science would identify themselves as philosophers. But as those different disciplines became more self-sufficient and more specialized, they got shunted off into different places in the academy. And then the people left in philosophy departments are just the leftovers who sort of didn't have anywhere else to go. Um, But that includes lots of people. uh, I mean, I'll, I'll just take as an example, David Albert over in Columbia is in the philosophy department. His degree is in theoretical physics from Rockefeller University. Why is he in a philosophy department? Because he was interested in questions of physics that physics departments are no longer very interested in. And he could pursue those questions better in a philosophy department. I mean, my own degree, highest degree is history and philosophy of science. It's not actually a philosophy degree, if you will. Mm. Is it surprising that that I am interested in science and maybe have some intelligent things to say about it? Not you know, not from my background and my training. Um, when you say that that physics today is very practical, that suggests, uh, first of all, it suggests one thing, and second of all, in a certain sense, it isn't true at all, okay? <laughs> so the thing it suggests is that all of physics has just become a branch of engineering, mm. right? That the only reason one pursues physics is because at the end of the day, you get toaster ovens out of it. And you know, that would be awfully sad. And then they should just stop calling them physics departments as far as I'm concerned, you know, say, okay, we're going to move you over to the engineering school. Um, And the second thing is just not true at all. I mean, for for 50 years, high energy physicists have been trying to figure out this thing called string theory. Does it have any practical applications? No. Could it ever conceivably have any practical applications? No. No. Is it likely to even be correct? That turns out to be no, too. That's a different issue. But even if it were correct, it's not going to give you a better toaster of it, mm. right? So it's just not true that the, the primary motive of even what's done in physics departments is practical. The problem is this, the theoretic, the purely theoretical part, the part that is aimed at simply understanding the physical world, that part has been neglected in physics education for over half a century, probably more than that, for funny historical reasons that have to do with quantum mechanics. So the sorts of questions that Einstein would have been asking all the time and Schrodinger was asking all the time um, have been kind of kicked out of the physics curriculum. And those of us who are interested in those questions find that a tragedy and we find somewhere else to ply our trade because what else can we do? Um, It's just, you can't make a living in a physics department caring only about understanding Um, in, in the, in the kind of understanding that was standard, the sort of thing that, that uh, Maxwell worried about the sort of thing that Boltzmann worried about. It's just not, it's not considered proper in most physics departments. Although I I have to finish that by saying my sense is it's getting better. My sense is that things are coming back after a long dry period. uh, And and physicists are more interested in 
purely questions of what does it mean to understand something? What, how should a well-formulated theory be presented or how should it be formulated and things like that? And what, what counts as an explanation? All, all sorts of questions that get into more philosophical territory, if you will. I think you're absolutely right. I think that's, I mean, particularly with platforms like this, podcasts, I mean, we have this opportunity to dissect certain physical, well, certain physicist theories and talk about it. And it opens up the platform for, for the layman, let's say, to to ask questions that perhaps some scientists don't really think about in the day to day, because more often than not, we're all placed in these normative values that we go through life engaging with. And we don't really realize that we place value judgments to everything we do. Do you think it's... Yeah, I, I mean, I have to say my experience in physics and a lot of people's experiences in physics isn't that it's quite as unnoticed as insidious as, as that. Uh, you know, there's this phrase that either Feynman or, or David Merman came up with, shut up and calculate. And I know from my own personal experience and from many other people's experience and from my students' experience that they confront this in physics departments exactly when they want to raise the sorts of questions that I've been talking about. Mm. What's really going on? You know, what really is an electron? I mean, do electrons really orbit? I mean, what are these? These kinds of questions are physics questions and they raise them in class and then they're told shut up and calculate, right? I'm going to give you a method for making predictions about outcomes of experiments. And that method involves solving a bunch of equations. Now learn to solve the equations. And they're upset about it. They don't like it. They come and take classes in philosophy of physics in the in the philosophy department because they don't like it and they say gosh this is this is what i was interested in so i don't think it's quite as insidious in that i think that, that it's a source of immediate frustration to many many students eventually you get worn down or eventually maybe there's a sorting process that if this is really what you care about you just abandon physics because it's not addressing the questions you're interested in um but i think my sense is that many physicists um, harbor this sense of of unease about the way physics has gone and are actually quite happy when you come and talk to them about these questions in a straightforward way. You were drawn particularly to the philosophy of physics. Um, it's, is, is that because of this innate curiosity to figure out the fundamental nature of reality down at its core? Yeah, I, I mean, I, as I said, I think that's true. You have to be a little careful when you say it because it could be misconstrued mm -hmm. um, about what you mean by fundamental. Because, uh, and unfortunately, again, there are all these memes of the arrogant physicist who says, oh, you know, chemistry is just applied physics and biology is just applied chemistry and neurology is just applied biology and psychology is just, you know, and everything, everything is really, 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 really physics. Um, I think that's unfair to the other disciplines. I don't think that's appreciating the structure of the kind of understanding and explanation you get out of something like chemistry or something like uh, neuroscience or, you no, know, I mean, economics. I mean, you know, yes, you need a physical world to have an economic system, but really, honestly, you know, figuring out whether it's string theory is not going to make a, a dime's worth of difference to, to economics. Um, but there is a sense, right? There is a specific sense in which, yes, chemical behavior arises out of physical behavior and not the other way around. Um, the way I often like to say this is, is, is there's this, I, I mean, you may know this Tom Lehrer wonderful Tom Lehrer song about Werner von Braun, where he says, that's not my department, said Werner, right? The rockets go up, who cares where they come down? That's not my department, said Werner von Braun. Um, it, the thing that's special about physics among the empirical sciences is that every phenomenon studied by any other science is also a physical phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Right now, you may not be studying it as a physicist, but it is a physical phenomenon, right? And therefore, uh, again, you know, it, there's a stock market crash, and you're an economist. You're trying to figure out why. Well, that stock market crash, which involved a bunch of people pushing buttons and selling stocks, that was a physical event. Hmm. And therefore, in principle, 
it falls under physics. And, and the physicists can never, you know, every other department can say of some things, that's not my department, right? I mean, the, you know, the economist says, look, there was a big problem because of these droughts. And then you say, but why did the drought occur? And the economist says, I don't know why the drought occurred, right? Go talk to the climatologist. That's not my department. That's not what I deal with. And physicists never have that out it, 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 because everything is a physical phenomenon in a certain sense, they have to be able to handle it. Hmm. Theoretically, in that sense, in, in a very specific sense, I think physics is the most fundamental of all the empirical sciences. And therefore, if you're interested in that kind of fundamentality, you are drawn to physics. And that's why I think there are more philosophers of physics than there are of other sciences, even though there are a lot of philosophers of biology and some philosophers of chemistry and some philosophers of economics. Other sciences have their problems um, and their issues and need to be understood. But most people, I think, at this point, in a specialized field in philosophy of science or philosophers of physics.